It's your movie review, man. I'm Jeff Johnson, and this is Claude Fatier. And we have a very special guest. Claude, who's our very special guest? A very special guest is Bill Cameron. He's a good friend of mine, and he is a great guy who has an encyclopedic knowledge of movies. And, and so I, 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 I couldn't wait to get him on the show. I, I knew that this would be like a, a, a lot of fun. So welcome, Bill. So welcome, Good to be here. Bill. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. And so, Bill, we're bringing you on for the full extended review. We did the quick review, and we're bringing you on for the full extended view of Halloween Ends. Claude, what is Halloween Ends? Who are these two people looking over my shoulder? And, he, you know, the brother doesn't like someone staring you down like that. So I don't know how long he's going to stay where he's at. But tell us, tell us about Halloween Ends. Well, Halloween Ends is the final film in David Gordon Green's uh, trilogy uh, Bob, revolving around uh, Laurie Strode. Um, it takes place after the, the, uh, the original movie in, in 1979, uh, uh, it, 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 uh, 78, excuse me. Uh, we're talking about maybe about what, about 40 years later. And, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, Halloween 2018, you know, sort of Laurie Strode was sort of like in, in, in Sarah Connor mode, just waiting for the day that evil is going to come back to Haddonfield. Uh, Halloween Kills was basically what happened when things go completely wrong and, and basically most devastating things that could happen to her and Haddonfield ha happened there. And uh, the third one takes place uh, four years after uh, th those events. And at this point, uh, Michael Myers appears to have you know, disappeared. Lori's trying to get her life back together. She's living with her granddaughter in a nice home and she's working on a memoir so that she could move on. But a sequence of events uh, lead to Michael Myers uh, coming back again for the final Showdown, and uh, so uh, this, yeah. So this is a, uh, and this, you know, in my opinion is definitely sh sh is should be the end. I think it is the end. It should be the end. Um, it's the end for me ever watching, you know, these movies again. <laughs> if it makes a lot of money, it won't be the end. Believe me. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. It's the it, end, like. Uh, <laughs> It, you know, it, it's it's the end like the Rolling Stones did their last concert. It's the end until it's not the end. Yeah. <laughs> or like, or like, yeah, and, or like the nine the end, uh, last concerts for Kiss, you know. Exactly. Yeah, it's the end-ish. Yeah. Now, we already gave our quick review. If you may have already seen our quick review, we gave our four Power Fist rating. A zero is the worst and four power. This is the greatest film we've seen. It's in the pantheon of the greatest films we've ever seen. And when we gave our reviews, refresh our memories, Claude. What did you review and what did you say? What was the headline? I guess I guess the headline should be Claude must have seen another movie. No, my, my headline is I know that this was going to be divisive. I know that people were either going to like it or hate it. And I sort of slid into the, the liking it. And I gave it uh, three black power signs. And I know I probably lost a lot of respect in some points in, in, in our audience books. They're gonna be like, I'm not listening to Jack that this guy says anymore. But I'm gonna, you know what? This is the hill I'm taking a stand on. So I'm I'm fine with it. So Claude, in a, in a, in a film with a guy with a big knife at Halloween decides he's gonna take it for the team with three power fists out of four. And uh, as you may recall from our short review, he was right. It's 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 a bipolar distribution, y'all. Yeah. Um, I started us down this path watching this uh, series. I actually enjoyed. Uh, I went back and enjoyed uh, one and two. And please check our review for uh, two, which uh, we'll put a link in at the end for it. Uh, and I and, and and I don't like this genre of film at all. I. I don't know why I picked these. I was intrigued. I was intrigued by the concept, by the temerity of film producers to take a movie series of 15 some odd movies and decide, nah, we're just going to throw three right in the middle. We're going to do the three that we want to do, and we're going to shove them right in the middle of the uh, series. 
And uh, that intrigued me. And I kind of liked one and two. But I can't say the same for ends. Uh, I gave it one power fist out of four, which is, and I don't mean that in no nice way. Um, I, I just gave it one. I thought it started out uh, good. In fact, oddly enough, it started out kind of sweet. Um, and I was like, I'm not sure why we're being so sweet uh, in a horror movie stab em up film. I figured, well, I guess we're going to, they're going to, they're going to fill up our hearts with love and then stab them open just in time for Halloween. But then it, it just totally did not go nearly as well and thoughtful and, you know, emotionally impacting or anything for the rest of the film. And so that's why it just gets one for me. And so Bill Cameron, what, what said you and a before and what say you about Halloween ends? I gave it one power black power fist. Uh, uh, when I just when I thought it was going, I well, first of all, I hated the first two. I mean, I hated the last one more than the first one. Uh, and with this, when it started out as something that looked very promising, it had me going, "Okay, this is this is probably going to be different. This looks interesting," and uh, it just went downhill from there. Uh, the writing is all over the place, and I don't mean that in a good way. Uh, you know, the character motivations, plot. Well, there are no plot twists, really. But, I mean, it, it just it's just a mess. Um, you know, things look... There are things in this film that make little or no sense. Uh, the love story, if you want to get that, the love story in this film, uh, is totally unbelievable. Uh I mean, Roger Ebert, you know, he had a term called the idiot plot where a plot works only if every character in the film is a complete idiot. And I think <laughs> Halloween ends is a perfect example of it. I mean, people just do stupid, nonsensical things in this in this movie that are, you know, this make absolutely no sense. And uh, well, we knew how it was going to end or had an idea how it was going to end. And I thought it was rather anticlimactic and then you had i mean after what happens what you were waiting for happens you had i mean i thought it was ridiculous the whole procession scene where the entire town of haddonfield has this march down the street to see the final uh disposal of michael myers i mean i thought it was laughable i, I just did I mean, because nothing in this film is in keeping with, and I guess we'll get into more detail, you know, later, but it's not in keeping with what the original Halloween was or was meant to be. I mean, I think the original Halloween is, you know, a classic piece of cinema. I mean, it's okay. a perfect film. Yeah. I, it, not only is it one of the five greatest horror films ever made, in my opinion, it's actually a great American film, period. Uh Wow. And we can go into all the sequels or reimaginings, the remakes, whatever later on. But uh, I thought this whole current trilogy was just a big, big clusterfuck. I mean, it. it <laughs> so they destroyed the American I, classic. Word, word, I mean, I'll say words fail me. Words fail me how big a mess this it, is. It sounds like they did. Well, you you pretty described it pretty well that they did they, they did that they destroyed an American classic. Uh, I'll jump in as the amateur on here, and then I will let you guys deep dive uh, 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 further on this. We'll, we'll, we'll let Claude go next, and then you guys can deep dive further. So you get the two, two uh, uh, both experts and uh, lovers of this series at some level uh, uh, can, can kind of take it apart. Uh, like I said, I, I was intrigued by uh, their boldness to try to do this little thing. Um, and uh, the, the first two, I differ from you, I guess, because I didn't think they were terrible. Um, uh, and maybe that's because I really don't like you, you. You took deference with me calling it a slasher earlier. And I'm, and I'm going to let you unpack what that means later. Not for me, but... <laughs> uh, for me, uh, horror or gore or I call them slashers only because it seems like every stupid uh, person follows their dog into a room full of knives and gets slashed up. Uh, that's all I mean by it. But, you know, I don't like those types of film anyway. And the other two, 
you know, had maybe less of that. So made me like it a little bit better. Uh, had more, you know, of the, uh, it seemed like the series had these comical exotic kills seemed to be the, you know, the, 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 the key thing of the genre. You know, if you walk into a, uh, a butcher sh shop, you're going to get salami sliced. You're going to come out of sashimi. I mean, that seems to be the the way to go. This one had a little bit. There was something about him that I liked. I don't. I'm totally unskilled to defend my position of why I liked the first two as much as you hated them. Um, but um, I thought they're all right. But this one, it like like you like you mentioned when it opened and it opened talking about the relationships. And the relationships that it looked like um, uh, our primary carry, uh, character, Jamie Lee Curtis's Lori, and her granddaughter, Allison, were somehow, you know, uh, finding love, right? They were four years out from the events of the last film and all their tragedy. And even as the entire community continues to, I guess, be traumatized uh, by what they should be traumatized, 15 films, or now only two films. But still traumatized that people are committing suicide and they're blaming everything on, on uh, Michael Meyer, no matter how bad it happens. That's going on in everyone else's lives. But somehow these two seem to be finding some sweet um, relationships. And, uh, and, and, and that was working for a minute, right? And I thought, okay, this is working. You, you still... Somebody got to take a knife out of a pumpkin in a minute here and cut somebody up, but maybe they'll find a way of moving us to that uh, in equally of a sentimental and compelling way. But no, no, that, that's not what we did. Um, you guys can correct me later uh, about what, how far they moved away from the canon. But somehow a bunch of marching band members and no disrespect to marching band. I'm a marching band guy. My family's marching band people, but marching band thugs is just a bridge too far. It is. That's <laughs> that, shall I use another term? You're jumping the shark mm -hmm. by giving us the marching band thugs are gonna beat up a guy and turn him evil. Wow. What's your origin story? Well, see what had happened was a bunch of marching band members beat up on me so bad that I turned evil. Well. I mean, just to push back a little bit on it, just, just being somebody who's, who's subbed a bunch of different high schools, you do have a lot of nerds now that are trying to act like Mr. Get Bad. So I, I'm yeah, just saying. I, Revenge of the Nerds you, has you, come you, so far. Revenge of the Nerds has come you, so you, far you, that we've got thug bass drum. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it's possible. I, you know, what I, players, it, Piccolo yeah. players, let me help you right now. I'm just saying, if you're playing I know, Piccolo. I know they're, they're, they're your people. That's that, 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 if, that's if your word. If you're playing the Piccolo, I, I'm, I'm talking that's about my own word. people. If you're playing the Piccolo, <laughs> seriously, don't break bad on someone. Don't do it. <laughs> don't. They should or lie. They're gonna try. <laughs> or lie. Okay? <laughs> do not say, you know, I play a double reed instrument and I'm going to whoop you behind. Don't do that. But the Don't. thing is about this guy, everybody was trying to whoop his ass. When he was, yes. when he was a baby, when, when he was babysitting that kid, the kid turned into a little gremlin. I mean, everybody, that, that was, that was the whole thing about his character. Everybody fucked with this dude. It was I, easy to be I, whooped. Clearly. I will say, I will say that uh, the actor, Rohan Campbell, he's very good in this role. Yeah. And it's one of the few pluses I give the film. I mean, he, he was excellent in the role, but, he belongs in a different movie. That's the he, problem. He belongs in a different movie. Uh, somehow, I don't know. I, I don't know what they were trying to do, but we went from from that to if I touch Michael Meyer, I will the evil will jump into me. Now that that <laughs> is that what it was? <laughs> I, I, uh, I'll have a flashback and forward of my life, which suddenly will make me want to be evil like you. <laughs> Meyer had four years to heal up. He's living under a sewer. I can see why that might keep your wounds from being healed, other than the fact that you're 40 years older and still killing people. Um, so, so but he hasn't he was... killed anyone in four years. That's the thing. Yeah, oh, he's not he... mentioned that and there have been any deaths by no knives deaths. or some other. He's no, just living no, in a no sewer. Deaths. He's just living in underground in a sewer for four <laughs> years. Sewer, clothes yeah. on. With with rats and occasionally, occasionally 
uh, possibly killing somebody once in a while, but or not, homeless people, you know, sure. Okay. Yeah, dragging yeah. a homeless person in there. You know. And then and then when he did kill somebody, he was like, I have the power. I am the lone source creature. Uh, I there is all there will be only. I don't know. We're making up new lore now. If he can kill somebody, he gets stronger. He better. He's forty freaking years old, plus the age he was when he started killing. Grants. Around 20 something, so he'd be around 60 something now. Mm. No, not to call people gramps, but I mean, I'm also not taking bullets, burns, yeah. stabs in the neck, fingers cut off, living in a doggone tunnel for four years and still thinking that I can keep on killing people. It's just so, yeah. So, somehow yeah. the, the magic of this universe changes, and all he has to do is choke somebody and he can spread his evil into you. Yeah, look him in the eye. If you look him in the eye, and then your eyes will change. And they even had someone say, you know, he was a good kid. He was a good babysitting boy. And I wanted to give him one more chance after he knocked my child off the third floor balcony and busted his head open. And so I pulled over and said, boy, I'm gonna give you one more chance. But I looked him in the eye and he's not the same. No, <laughs> no, no. So everything after that, and then the kill to be killed. And I love you, but I think I'm turning into a killer. And then they burned down the tower symbolically. There was no introduction to, to what burning down the tower means other than that was the place where the boy was going to go one day. That's where he goes to dream and his tower's on fire. So therefore that made an epiphany in my... No, too late. No epiphany. Well, what, what gets me with this film, at the end of Halloween Kills, let's see, he's uh, he stabbed multiple times. I believe he shot. Uh, two or three times, uh, burned, uh, garroted, uh, beaten, a, beaten to a pulp, and he's still alive. Yes. In this film, <laughs> all Laurie Strode has to do is keep stabbing him, cut his throat, his wrist, and boom, he's dead. I mean, I mean, the first film, he's the fucking Wolverine. Now he's, you know, that easy to kill. I, it's, I mean. The problem with this whole, with all three films, is the writing. Period. I think the the writers had too many ideas, and you know, they just didn't know how to work them into a cohesive, uh, well, interesting, interesting story. I mean, I, I mean, I would actually say you could make one good two hour, two hour plus film with all these ideas. You didn't, you didn't need three. You could do one. Really, I mean, I really mean that. A good writer could do that, but you needed three films which are so disjointed, so unclear, so unfocused. I mean, they're all unfocused. I mean, okay, you have the love story with Halloween ends, which I think is nonsensical. Uh, and the last one, it's you know the whole the thing of mob mob rule and mob action and, and mob rule. It was just it was a one note. It was one note. And then the first film, I mean, I honestly don't, I guess it was just setting up a rematch between Laurie Strode and, and Michael Myers, but it was just also unfocused. And the writers and probably the director just didn't know how to, you know, bring the mix together into something solid. It's, I mean, that, that's the problem. I mean, it's the writing is the problem. And that's, the, you know, that's the issue with a lot of films these days, the, the, the scripts, the writing. No sense of characterization. Uh, I mean, the relationships in the, in this film are so tethered. I mean, you can't believe one person's related to another, uh, and they're just uninteresting. You don't hear, you don't care who gets killed. I mean, they're just they're just nine pins to be Boy. knocked down. I mean, <laughs> that was that was actually the criticism lodged against the uh, you know the the first cycle of. Uh, slasher films of, of 40 years ago you know that people were set up as nine pins but i can tell you you know re-watching some of those old slashers or, or as i like to call them shockers uh they're far more interesting than what i've seen in any of the last three halloween films i mean they really are and you know i think they had a big budget i mean i guess the original halloween cost what less than half a million dollars or something sure and it made millions. I mean, it, there's there's an advantage to working with a low budget. I mean, you have the sense you have the sense of a guerrilla filmmaking style where you feel you have nothing to lose. Let's just go for it 
and you have a, there's a lot of energy that transfers to the screen out into the audience. And that's why Halloween works. That's why a lot of, you know, the uh, great 70s uh, low budget horror films work. You know, Hills Have Eyes or Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Last House on the Left. They were all in, made independent of Hollywood, you know, uh, facilities. Um, you know, usually they were usually regional, made outside of California in different parts of the country. And you had filmmakers who just had high energy, had a good idea what did they, what they wanted to do. So the low budget, you know, it, it narrowed their focus to putting out a good film. Constraints like low budget force you to be disciplined. Be more, be and, more creative even. And be creative, creative. Yes. Right? It, you know, it forces you to be disciplined so that you, you know, you take your time with the shots and you do your shots well and, and you don't waste a lot of time. And it forces you to be creative. And coming up with creative things. And, and I'm cool with creative kills. I feel like this movie tried to have maybe one creative kill, if we will. A uh, guy who talks too much, they gave us an interesting uh, a kill for the DJ. And then did you notice how it finished off, too? They hit his body fall perfectly. Let's see if I can do it with Jamie Lee Curtis. When he died, he, 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 his body fell right into the shape of his poster behind him. Mm -hmm. Remember that? You remember that? I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. So you established one shot in an entire two-hour film. You, you you had one established shot, and the rest of the yeah. we, we didn't try to make any shots, you know you know dramatic amazing, you know the flames blow up and your guy's perfectly centered and then it sears in everyone's mind, you know I I again I don't like this genre at all but I know what Carrie looks like when she came out all with her blood blood on her body and way she, face and she came out that that image is stuck in my mind forever, and I didn't watch that movie. Okay. Were there, you know, even this poster that I got behind me, there was never anything as good looking as this right here. That's staged for a poster. You know, I mean? there was no creativity around the kills or in dramatic kills. Uh, but that came from me who only gave it one star. So, Claude, we've taken up <laughs> so much of our time on our one star, our one black power fist. What uh -huh. say ye for not one, not two, with three whopping power fists. Okay, I there, uh, first of all, I want to say that I think you, you know you guys did like an, an excellent takedown. I honestly cannot really push back, you know, against any of it. Um, as you said, uh, you know, there were a lot of things that were happening, and, and I guess that's sort of one of the things that's sort of fascinating about it. I mean, you definitely have a sense of everything and the kitchen sink trying to be thrown into to the, to the story. Uh, so if you know if you're going to see it in a movie theater, okay, you're probably going to have sort of like mixed feelings about it. But I also have a feeling that if you decide that you know there's something about this movie that's interesting, I'm going to get it on DVD. There are a lot of just in my opinion, just a lot of interesting things that have, that have been set up. Now, one thing we all agree on is that the beginning, you know, it had a, it had an interesting, you know, setup. You know, the whole that whole you know the whole thing that happened with, with you know Corey you know Corey Cunningham. And, uh, you know, there were, it, was, it was just, uh, I just sort of like the fact that they sort of put him in a situation where he seemed like he was connected in a way to Lori and connected to the daughter. Both he and Lori went through what, what I would be called the babysitting assignment from hell. They both were in the worst, very worst circumstances. In her case, it was fighting off, you know, an intruder trying to kill the kids. In his case, it was actually him being responsible <laughs> for, the kid, for the kid. But I sort of like the little things that they did in terms of setting up that even though Corey's story takes place one year after, you know, after 2019, you know, the mom is setting him up for the assignment, assignment and the kid that she's describing, oh, he's, you know, he's a scared little kid. He's a, he's a, he's a bedwetter. And they sort of give him some rules, you know, uh, no, no, uh, you know, no, you get them to bed early. No, no scary, uh, no scary TV. No, no scary TV. No sugar. He obviously breaks all the rules. All right, and the kid turns into a little damn gremlin. I mean, where was the kid that was so quiet and you know? So this, so this whole thing, you know, in the in the way the kid was sort of acting was really incredibly mean spirited and nasty, which got a sense of how much this guy is going to be messed with through probably you know you know, throughout his, throughout his life. 
Um, and he does everything right. He, I, I mean, I mean, aside from you know breaking the rules, I mean, they they you have you have that. You sort of have uh, you know sort of the things where he 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 goes into the kitchen to get you know after he decides not to take a beer. That's when things you know sort of go bad. <laughs> so you know you got. You got little things that 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 are that are that are you know happening. You know, the, you got you you the fall of the you know the kid falling in the beginning, and eventually Corey's fall. You know, after you know years later, you know, uh, could could bookmark in a way his 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 own movies. You know, he decides not to take the beer. The things go bad. He drinks beer at the party, <laughs> and then the mom chews him out. You know. And, um, you know, so, I mean, I'm sorry. So to make everything, you know, so there are a lot of sort of like interesting little, little, you know, you know, interesting little moments that, that are peppered through, through, you know, through, throughout the story. Um, now where are things that I definitely, uh, you know, things that may have been like horrible decisions. Yeah. I understand, for example, when Lori sees him getting bullied and, she wants to help him out and she sort of sees him as a kid who has a rough break, you know, which is, you know, which, which is, you know, you know, which is, which is nice and generous. I think, you know, and, and I think a lot of people sort of could feel for that. Now, will you take somebody who's like that and set him up on a date with your daughter? Eh, I don't think yeah, so. <laughs> that, that was just no, ridiculous. That was absurd. I mean, so, but but I had to honestly say I was pulling, you know, I, I was I was definitely I like you said, I was I was brought in by the by this guy's performance. There was part of me that was sort of in a way sort of pulling for him. I see Lori, who also had been through babysitter through hell, wanting to sort of help him out. And then I sort of in a way sort of see the daughter wanting to sort of in a way um help him out. Now again, this this is big. Big leaps of logic. I understand that, but in terms of this story like about people balls. trying to move on, I I was sort of like, okay, I'm 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm giving I'm giving this you know I'm giving this a chance. Um, Michael being in a weekend state, it it you know, uh, I wasn't. I didn't think it, it was a horrible idea to certain, I mean, I, I, it, it did go against the canon. It did lower the stakes a little bit, but seeing how he had gotten attacked so badly at, you know, in the end of the second movie. And, you know, I, I, I sort of, I, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't against the idea that he wouldn't have been exactly the same force that he would, that he would have been. And that's probably going against, you know, what John Carpenter, you know, created, but I was sort of, you know, I was sort of okay with with it. And at that point, where Corey is sort of, you know, you know, basically he's gotten shitted on by everybody, including the band. I mean, everybody's messing with this kid. <laughs> uh, the fact that he sort of gets this strength from Michael, I was like, okay, this this is this is silly, but I'm still. I'm still somewhat, so, somewhat, inter you know, somewhat interested. Um, David Gordon Green is not, although he did these three movies, is not like a horror director. He does not, you know, have that sense of rhythm, that sense of sadism, just sort of giving somebody uh, some hope and then just dragging and pulling them away from it. And in fact, it's like he took two movies that he, you know, he, he sort of was combining like in a way two different movies. I could see him doing like an independent film about two, you know, wounded lovers who feel trapped by the town and they eventually try to, to leave to create a new life. I could see, you know, cause you take a look at his other, you know, movies, he sort of, you know, delves with, with, with you know, character dramas like that. Um, but, uh, so I mean, it was like I, I was okay with the story. It wasn't great, but I had to honestly say I give the movie sort of like credit for you know trying to do trying to do something different. I've seen a number of these Halloween movies where they sort of fall into a certain thing, and I can honestly say you know um, you know things that they do in terms of his character the. 
what they did with, with Lori, it seems like it's a logical step that she wants to try to move away from this. She's working on the memoirs, the town still treating her, you know, to a certain degree blaming her, which, you know, to a certain degree, sort of doesn't, you know, it, it makes a little bit of sense, but but also, I mean, I, I think the fire department deserves some credit to <laughs> put the fire out in the second movie. But, they put but, the fire um, out. And then, and then all of them carrying axes and none of them could kill this fool. <laughs> you know, this, uh, I mean, if the movie had concentrated solely on Corey, I mean, Michael Myers, the actual Michael Myers, I think, didn't have to be in the film. But as you said, it's interesting. Like I said, it started interestingly with this kid who's, you know, hard luck. He's, you know, he's crapped on by everybody and in the town because of an accident and had they concentrated more on him embracing the idea of Michael Myers you know I'm not going to take this anymore I'm going to become everything this town fears and I'll show them if it had followed that path that narrative path it would have actually worked and might have been a better movie mm. it could have been uh, like Unforgiven uh, exactly. where, where he He's like, I'm gonna be just like Michael Meyer. I'm gonna be their worst nightmare. And then right at the last minute, be like, no, 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 I'm Michael Meyer. And he kills him and kills everybody at the end, mm -hmm. right? Because an Unforgiven was a movie, a western, saying, you know, cowboys, you know, really weren't like that. Outlaws really weren't like yeah. that. Outlaws really weren't as evil as they said in the comic books. And then Clint Eastwood was like, except me, except me. <laughs> I'm I mean, except when you kill, except when you kill my best friend and you put him on. Kill my best friend, and then there's, then there's one. Then there's we don't, we don't see Michael Myers until what forty minutes into the film. Yes, and then he disappears for a while. Then I mean, it's like he's an afterthought. Yeah, he's an afterthought. So just concentrate on Corey and his path towards Michael. Them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, toward evil, his accidental and, you evil. You know, assuming that Michael Myers is gone or dead, I don't know. I mean, it, it's like I said, the writing in this is unfocused. They, I guess, they had some idea where they wanted to take the Corey character, but it, it just, they just couldn't make it. They could, just couldn't flesh it out. They really couldn't, for whatever mm -hmm. reason, they didn't flesh it out to something that was actually interesting and compelling. It was just okay, like I said. We set something up that sounds interesting, but we can't, we don't know how to go any further. So stab, 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 bang, bang, bang. Uh, that's literally what you have here. I mean, and Michael, it, and Michael, it, and then yeah, finally you have the final showdown with Michael Myers. It's as if the filmmakers, okay, this is what the audience came to see. Forget Corey. Let's get the whole Michael Laurie thing out of the way. And, you know, it, it was. Uh, it was almost like, oh, we forgot. Those two are supposed to finish each other yeah. off because this is the end. And it was a little anticlimactic. It, right, because really the interesting was. part really was, it even stayed semi-interesting about how how uh, it wasn't clear what Lori was trying to do. Like, she was going to set up Corey to kill her so then her daughter would realize he was a bad person. Uh, it's a terrible plan, but it seemed like that. But then the plot twist was, no, uh, I'm not going to let you set me up that way. I'm going to kill Remember myself. Remember when she said... Remember when we'll she said, when I look into his eyes, I see Michael Myers' eyes. I mean, where did that come from? At first, you felt sorry for the kid. Then you look into his eyes and you see Michael Myers. I mean, Everybody saw that. Yeah. yeah you know what that is. He was a good kid I, until he leaned in the car and then he yeah. wasn't there anymore. Yeah. yeah know, I mean, it, show, it, me, it, show me, don't <laughs> tell me, right? Yeah. Uh, I think you're saying, but show me, don't tell me. Let him yeah. become uh, yeah. like this. Um, and not just because he got beat up by a bunch of band kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, they, 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 I mean, like I said, they didn't, they didn't do a big job of showing it, but it was like, it was like when the, the switch went on, she recognized it, but that whole, you know, the whole setup of him, you know, out, you know, standing outside the bush and that was like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> but, but it, yeah, it, it, you know, there are a lot of things. I mean, there, there, there are definitely just elements of this story, which is just, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. But I was, I was sort of, you know, I, you know, I was sort of, um, and then in the procession at the end, yeah, it, it, I mean, it was, you know, it was a little anticlimactic, but it seemed to me like, okay, they've tried different ways to kill this person. And, and 
you know, I I guess this was but, sort of like the cliff note finale in a way. But it was just the fact that, you know, he got impaled, they killed him, they cut his throat, and then, you know, and I guess sort of like, you know, the the wood chipper has been used a number of times, so this was just a bigger scale. <laughs> I mean, because of course you knew the many glory shots they had of, they of, the, of, of the of the metal shredder that somehow they showed it three times. Stage. You only have to show it once. So, so, so I, I so you know, come to a wrap. So it would come to a wrap. So it would come oh, to sure. a wrap. Bond okay. said it would be split. It was split and split yeah. in two different ways. Oh, uh, one three different ways. Was, for me, three different ways. I know, but you said we split from from highs and lows. We didn't get a middle. Uh, I get one power fist. Conclave three. Um, point out some interesting aspects of it that you might enjoy. And as you mentioned, you said DVD. It is streaming simultaneous in theaters and streaming on Peacock. So you can go watch it for Peacock if you already got it for free or paid for Peacock. You know, for no money. I guess I can endorse it for no money. I guess I don't know. I don't want to speak for Bill. Bill gave it one, one power uh, fist. So yeah, how many power yeah. fists would you give the other ones? Was it like like zero? <laughs> zero. I hate it. So we're your movie the original review. Halloween man. was a movie that didn't need a sequel. It really I'm did. Jeff Johnson. This is Claude Fatier. Claude Fatier. And a very special cuss. Thanks so much, Bill Cameron. Good to be here. Uh, Halloween ends. Let us know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.